said that many, many times. And uh, we were promised how if, you know, we call the tithe to the blessed message. Uh, I, I lost count of how many times that we heard that statement uh, come across <laughs> the, the pulpit by the uh-huh. uh, professional preacher. No doubt. But uh, it, it's a matter of going into the scriptures and studying and praying for Every one of us must do is called to do this, mm-hmm. not to take another man's word. And nor, they don't have to take my word yeah. for it or believe the book, yeah. but they do need to go in and and look in God's word for themselves and believe what God says. Mm-hmm. Rory, Rory, now here here's here's the uh, the catch on that one. If you were in a church and you began to discover truths that the church didn't believe in, you would either be uh, labeled as having a demon or a uh, troublemaker, and uh, they say, "Brother, we love you, but get out." Well, that's uh, pretty close to what happened. Uh, we, we didn't get the demon part, but uh, one <laughs> night we had uh, the pastor and his wife and a group of elders, uh, which I used to be one of a uh, group. Uh, they all showed up unannounced on our front porch, and uh, on a Monday night we invited them in, and uh, it was a real interesting two and a half hours, believe me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, was, and, and, was, uh, was, was there a lot of brotherly love going on in there? There was. It, it was it was cordial. Uh, I, a couple of the t- telling moments were at one point, I asked the pastor in front of everyone, I said, are we going to be biblically honest? And he said, well, yes, of course. So I said, well, there's not a single verse of scripture where any church was told to tithe. Well, then he wouldn't talk about it. Mm-hmm. So uh, he wouldn't discuss it. Then he, then he looked at the group and he said, all right, everyone that's going to continue tithing here, raise your hand. Well, my wife and I were the only ones that didn't have our hands raised. So there was a little bit of uh, manipulation going on as he protected his territory. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's kind of typical. Uh, probably, uh, I'm sure, seven, eight years ago, five years ago, when I was on the other side of the fence and I believed in tithing, I would have reacted the same way. I would have felt threatened and had to defend mm-hmm. what I thought was right. Yeah. Uh, so so was it that you were, were you in the church and did was it because you were telling others that you didn't believe that tithing was in there or uh, did the... Uh, did uh, did they get some sort of divine revelation saying that they need to go visit you? How did they come about to to nail you like that? Uh, they well, I asked. I was asking questions, and uh, the last time I sat in church service, uh, there was a man. This story's in the book. There was a man up there uh, preaching, and he was a lay minister, a real nice guy, wonderful, wonderful man, but. He never had, uh, he, he always had a problem keeping himself employed, and he was usually sick or afflicted. And, uh, while he was, he was preaching, then, uh, he went into Malachi, the famous passage of scripture about robbing God and, mm-hmm. and tithes and offerings. Right. Mm-hmm. And he was encouraging the congregation to, uh, continue, you know, to pay your tithes and be faithful and this and that. Well, as, if he did that, the Lord pointed out a word in, the, uh, in that passage to me that, that showed me that uh, it, tithing was of the law uh, and one of the ordinances of the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. And after the service was over, I went up to him and I said, Hey, brother, did you, did you notice this, um, in this verse right before that? It talks about the law and the ordinances uh, that we're not under anymore. Well, that that kind of that scene there happened several times. I mentioned it to a couple of the people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, another man I mentioned that this was the man. Another man who was he was the one that was always used to receive the tithes and offerings. He'd get up there and speak and encourage everybody in their giving. And, mm-hmm. and um, right. as I was I was noticing as I was reading the, the New Testament. It never mentioned tithing for, in the church, but it always mentioned giving. There was lots and lots of scriptures about, you know, giving. Yeah. And so I, I mentioned that to him, and, and uh, so these were the things that, that filtered back to the pastor. Of course, at that church, we had a 24-hour rule in the leadership that if anyone heard anyone else talking uh, contrary to the given uh, order of, uh, of the church, Within 24 hours, they were to report that to the pastor, didn't, and didn't matter who it was. <laughs> wow. Well, after all those years, Daniel, yeah. of, of being on the inside and being one of the ones that, you know, went running to the pastor yeah. when something mm-hmm. happened, it, it, the spotlight turned on me. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, man. I tell you, tw- the 24-hour rule. Never heard that. 
Uh, but doesn't it uh, doesn't the fact of, of questioning scripture in a church uh, isn't there at least these two that I know of? One says try the spirits, and another one says that no scripture is given that is by private interpretation. So I mean, is is all scripture settled from way back, and that we never had a part in, in the understanding of it? I mean, who made the decisions as to what is the rule and what is not the rule? Well, men made those decisions. Obviously, uh, Jesus, you know, the church as it is, Daniel, conditions the people that attend the institutional church, we call it, uh, carefully conditions them not to question or buck the system. And if you start to buck the system or ask too many questions, then you are you're mm-hmm. isolated, become isolated. Yeah. Jesus, you know, in the Bible, over and over again, uh, there's warning after warning about false teachers, false prophets, false Christs, false messiahs, all these, over and over again, deceivers, wolves. Well, in, in our American church, we're just taught to love and accept everybody and everything, and not to judge, but we swallow a lot of stuff that, that, the, that the Bible tried to warn us from doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, that is kind of an amazing thing there. And the other thing uh, I, I noticed that uh, you said that you uh, or that pastors are hired. Uh, now, did somebody hire Jesus, who may be considered the, the, the chief shepherd pastor? Was he hired? No, he was not hired by anybody. He, 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 he was offered it all. I mean, the devil offered it to him in Matthew chapter 4, the, the kingdoms of this world and the glory and the, uh, all the ego building uh, that went with that, and uh, he, he turned it down. In fact, when he had, to, he had to pay taxes, he had to send Peter out there to go find a fish with a coin in it to pay his taxes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and my, matter of fact, uh, you will not find anywhere in, that, in your Bible that where Jesus received tithes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and is there any, any t- scripture in the New Testament that it says to pay tithes at all? Well, oh, yes, it's all. Uh, there's the, in Hebrews chapter eight. It talks about the Levites. Those are the the priests under the Old Testament covenant of the Law of Moses. They had a command to take tithes of the people. Of course, he, and an offshoot of that is that the tithes they received were they were edible. It was produce. It was not money. And uh, totally different tithing was totally different in, in the Old Testament. It had it had little or nothing to do with money. But here we go in the New Testament. It's all focused in in our church culture on our money. But the real tithe was not money. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, if you uh, it looks like you said you may have tithed tithed for uh, at least twenty years. Uh, is is the end result because one of the things isn't that they the the hook that they sort of give you or the bait they say that you know that uh, uh, you will be blessed in the field and they have a whole litany of blessings and the devourer will be re- rebuked and God will come to your side. Um, so I, I, after all that, did you see evidence of what they claim would happen if you tithe, whether or not you believed or not? Did you see evidence of a of an opposite reaction when you tithe? I'm not sure I understand the question there. Did you benefit I, I, from it? Did did you see, uh, okay, we tied this week, and wow, my, my car miraculously just got paid off by an unknown vendor or, or person, and then, uh, and then one week you didn't tie, then all of a sudden you got a, a doctor bill. I mean, did you see things like that at all? Did you see any difference whether you tied or whether you didn't? Uh, to, to be honest, we did not see a difference. In fact, what we did see in the lives of many people in that fellowship, and especially the pastor and his family, they were some of the sickest people that we knew. And sickness is part of the curse. That's It's one manifestation of the curse. Uh, listed back there in Deuteronomy chapter 28. There's a whole catalog of them, curses and blessings. And... Uh, these people that promoted tithing were some of the sickest people I knew. Well, I'm, we're looking for my wife. And I don't carry medical insurance. We haven't done that for years, and God's been healing us. Mm-hmm. But uh, this, as far as tithing to be blessed, no, I, I don't. I don't see it. I, I, and I really didn't see it in the lives of a lot of people that that were faithful tithers. Mm-hmm. All and right. It depends what you call blessings too. I mean, you, some you can be blessed financially in some areas, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that uh, your marriage might not. You won't have marriage problems. Yeah. Uh, tithers seem to have no hesitation to go out and, mm-hmm. and borrow large sums of money and hey, buy I'm, boats and motorcycles. Roy, and all kinds I, of I, don't, I don't mind. I don't. I don't mean to add insult to injury, but that uh, that passer recently, uh, Haggard, I think it was his name. I wonder. Right. If, I wonder if he was teaching tithing just before he uh, went gay. <laughs> 